Hello, Makubetsu. This is YouTube. Wait, let me try this again. Hello, YouTube. This is Makubetsu. Um, also known as Arbanos. Also known as Sukune. Also, also known as Kale, uh, the dragon, not the vegetable. And also known as Sora. I've got a bazillion nicknames, and none of them make any sense anymore. Anyways, um, so this next video is directed towards the individual who, um, sorry, my countertop is very dirty. It's dusty. Um, who commissioned me the spiral. Uh, so this is basically just a quick care and instructional video on how to care for, uh, your partial. Uh, so I took out some stitches in the hand paw. Uh, this way I could show you exactly how to repair them. Uh, repair the stitches, uh, pop seams in awkward places. Because normally, when you have a pop seam, such as this one in the corner, you would just push these two ends together and stitch it up, a uh, blanket stitch. Uh, but whenever you have a pop seam in an area you can't get at the underside of, you need to be able to do what's called an invisible stitch. So I'm going to show you how to do that really quickly right now and hope that my camera can uh, capture this as much as possible. So I'm going to put my camera on top and awkwardly sew this well, floating in the air. So, I've got some thread and needle. And I'm going to see if I can do this awkwardly. So, uh, what you're going to do is, on one side of it, you're going to basically put your needle in just a little bit. Like so, until it comes out the other side. Pull the needle through. Do the same thing on the other side. Just poke it through. Now, what I'm doing is I'm hooking through, not the glove underneath, but just the fabric and pinching it together as I'm doing so. Then I'm going to be pulling it through again, then again on the other side. Oops, I'm trying to, it's awkward to film this hunched over on a flat surface. Pull it over. As, as you can see, as I'm rotating back and forth from the original side, to the opposite side, it's slowly pulling in the two pieces of fabric sorry, together. And that's essentially how you do an invisible stitch. Um, now, I'll probably redo the stitching um, by afterwards because it's a little bit awkward to try and do this. Um, no, but essentially that's what an invisible stitch looks like. Um, yeah, so afterwards you would just tie a knot in the end there, and then, you know, cut off that little bit, and that's basically how you do an invisible stitch. I will redo that in a second and make it nicer. <laughs> now, aside, the next thing that you will need to know um, about your suit and carrying is that the paw bottoms that you have for your feet are not outdoor tread. Uh, basically, these are not to be worn outside. Um, they are just simple foam um, uh, with a bit of, you know, a bit of a vinyl, you know, tread on the bottom, but they are not meant for outdoor bottoms. This is all resin down, but it will not stand long periods of time outside, especially in the rain. Do not get them wet, uh, because it will ruin your feet bottoms. They're not meant for outside. They're not meant for you know, a lot of, you know, strenuous activity. So don't try, like, doing jumping jacks and backflips and acrobatics and other crazy stuff for this. It's meant for walking from A to B and for photos. Um, that's basically just the general care thing because these are just a very, very simple feet bottoms, which is what you'd ask for. Uh, the next thing to know would be about your head. Um, and that BIP is that when you get it, your jaw might not fit your, sorry, the jaw, the moving jaw might not work for you right away because I've currently rigged it to basically fit for my jaw. Um, that being said, you might need to add a little bit of foam on this elastic right here or just underneath the elastic in order to bring the jaw closer to your jaw. Um, so you'll just need a little bit of hot glue and some craft foam and a little bit of trial and error until you can raise the jaw um, until it's closer to you so that it actually connects. If you're lucky, you won't have to do any adjustments at all, because uh, we're very similar in head in, so head size. But jaw size and shape size are a different thing altogether, which is why moving jaws are a little bit persnickety, especially on balaclavas. Uh, that said, though, um, you should be fine. Uh, as long as you take care of your head, don't get it wet, um, that sort of thing, you should be good. Um, as for cleaning, uh, what essentially you're going to do is, after you're done wearing them, is um, um, 
you're going to want to take a little bit of Febreze and you're just going to want to Febreze, uh, you know, the inside of the head and whatnot. Do not put any Febreze on your jaw set, especially the tongue. The tongue is basically a rubber uh, tongue and has um, makeup on it in order to give it that color and texture, as you can see. And do not put any of that sort of thing because you will run it the color off of it and you will make it and you will ruin it. Same goes for the outside. Do not put any Febreze on the outside of the mask and on to the actual uh, fleece because you could end up making the markings from because these are water-based acrylic markings. Uh, so any water could potentially make the paint run. It shouldn't. You shouldn't have any problem like if it's raining outside and you accidentally got a couple drops on the head. You will be fine. No need to panic. But don't go standing out there when it's a thunderstorm and being like, Oh, look at the pretty lightning! And get soaked. Because that would not be good. Because not only will you ruin the paint, um, but you'll ruin the head just in general because it is foam. And foam will grow mold if it is wet. So make sure you properly clean and dry your suits. Uh, this goes double for the feet paws and for the hand paws. Uh, same with the hand paws as well. You'll want to Febreze them very carefully on the inside. Uh, make sure you do it on the innermost glove because that's the one where you'll be sweating the most. Um, that's pretty much it. That's all you really need to know because I've given you a quick little instruction on how to take care of pop seams. Um, if you have any pop seams on the bottom of the feet, um, you can uh, take a bit of hot glue to push to basically reattach them, or a bit of resin. Uh, there's a type of resin that you can actually buy from uh, the dollar store. It's actually an epoxy glue. Um, um, it's basically you mix the two different kinds together, let it, uh, you know, scrape, put it on top of whatever you need, and let it cure. That being said, you'll only want to use it for the tread itself, and tr be careful not to get any on the fleece itself, uh, because if you do, you'll end up with a smudge mark like this, and you can't get it off. But, it's on the bottom, so I don't care. Because <laughs> I'm mean. Uh, that being said, that's pretty much all you need to know. Uh, if you take good care of this head, uh, this head should last you for many times. If you have any questions, you know where to contact me. And I hope you enjoy Spyro, and I hope you can take good care of him. And please show me uh, an unboxing photo when you get him. I will be shipping this out probably tomorrow. And I hope you enjoy him. I'm going to miss him. I had a lot of fun making this guy. Especially the airbrush markings. These are probably one of the nicest airbrushings I have done. Um, thank you once again for watching, and this is Macabitsy, and I'll see you all later. Bye.